At any rate, man, it's great to meet you. Thank you for taking a minute out. Before we get into your work and your life, I want to know right now, you know, four years ago in April, we were coming to grips with this pandemic. I'm curious, how did you survive the pandemic and how did it change you? Huh. Uh, I'll tell you what, uh, it wasn't it wasn't easy. Uh, I'll, I'll admit that I was with my one of my first clients, actually, when I started my business, and it was an absolute punch in the face. Uh, and you, I learned, uh, my client had to do a huge reduction in force because we were operating with a professional sports team and sports basically stopped yeah. and, uh, learned the power of money and really learned how people were holding a lot of things tight to the chest. And you had to learn how to really sell yourself, but you also learned where, what clients are investing in and, but they also had to really look at, you know, where the money is really going to go, but how can they still have an impact on consumers and businesses still coming to them? So you learned a lot uh, through the pandemic as well as keeping yourself safe because no one knew what was really going to be happening. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. So tell me exactly what you do for a living. I'm going to put you in front of a bunch of third graders. It's career day. One of the kids says, hey, what do you do for a living? How do yeah. you answer them? That is, that's, that's, a, that's an awesome question. It's like, and what I, if I would tell third graders, it's like, I would literally tell them that I help, I help them win more money or make more money. I help them bring in more business. Yeah. So then I they hope. can go on, so they can go to Disney World. Yeah. There you and go. They, yeah. Literally, that's what I would tell them. And so that's what I focus on. So, I, and if I change it from third graders and I talk to, you know, businesses, and I, I help them build uh, effective sales pipelines, build strategic partnerships, and work with sales leaders so they can have uh, structured sales organizations uh, and really be able to go out there, compete, and win win business. So a lot of companies have great products and services or offerings. But how can they really go out there and and win more business? So I come from a sales background. I can have very authentic conversations, and I know what goes into winning business. I know what goes into it. So how can I help you really be able to win, uh, win business as you uh, out in the field, whether it's now short term or long term? I bring you the structured sales uh, growth. So what did you want to be in the third grade? What was your dream? I wanted to be a fireman. Okay. All right. Did you try to? Did any of that? Become so, uh, well, I grew up in a, a town of 400 people. Like we, okay. we worked in the woods, uh, where I grew up in, in Western Maine. So, you know, we, I went to a two room schoolhouse and so we had volunteer firemen and I, we actually had a small, uh, uh, forest fire outside of our house. And of course we had, I don't know, surrounding towns come and it, I thought it was the coolest thing, but my dad did not think it was very cool of seeing a forest fire, but but seeing them work, I, I wanted to be a far, uh, uh, wanted to be a, a fireman. But I, I have a hearing problem. I lost my hearing when I was 21 uh, months, so that kind of put a lot of things. Being able to do anything, you know, from going into the military or doing anything else, you know, far. So that's kind of affected a lot of things. So talk to me a little bit about how you got into sales. What were the seeds early on in your upbringing that made you not only get into sales but want to help people get to a better place financially? Sure. So uh, I worked on Capitol Hill, uh, you know, during the 08, 08 crash, I needed to find a job. Basically, I had to find a job and it wasn't easy uh, at all. So I worked on Capitol Hill and then I was able to find an opportunity uh, for a defense contractor down here in D.C. And I really learned about the power of building uh, strong relationships, really becoming trusted advisors with uh, with companies and to be able to build long-term and, and uh, the company I was working with, they really educated their end customer, excuse me, on how to really grow and, and sell to them. So it wasn't really about a transactional opportunities. It was really about long-term, you know, building with uh, understanding that they have their best intentions in mind. And so, you know, I, I would learn from people who have, built hundred million, $500 billion businesses. So it really entrenched me. It's like, oh, okay, I, I love talking with people, love engaging with them. 
And it's not always about me. It's about what their end uh, end goal is. So that's what really kind of invested uh, me in this kind of this, this world. So I've worked with large businesses. I've worked with small businesses, worked with startups and with non nonprofits. So I've kind of seen uh, a good mix. So what about what what is it about DC that you like the best? Uh, well, I've you get a very diverse amount of people here. Uh, so you get people from all around the world. And not just you know on the hill, but if you get outside the hill, you get a great diverse people very who are very uh, engaging, who really want to do uh, you know great work in the world. Whether you're working in everywhere from whether it's the intelligence side, or it's the architecture, or it's the construction, you know, whether it's uh, IT, you know, they're always looking to how they can actually better better themselves, better people around them. So it's been a really great uh, uh, area uh for for growth so and some of the professional associations i've joined you, you really get to hear about the next end uh next generation of what's coming out from the even on the construction side or or why soil is so important when you build so there's a lot of different areas so that's that's one reason why i've stuck got a great group of friends down here so that's kind of why i've uh, been here for the for so long right on so who's been a consistent role model or a hero for you in your life so it's been, you know, I've had a, a work for a couple of great, uh, a great people, uh, great individuals over the years, and it's really been able to being able to work directly uh, with them. Uh, one of my uh, first uh, executives that I worked with, his name is uh, his name is Gordon Kesting, and Gordon really was able to uh, help me understand the, the the importance of building with structure and how to go in sometimes it's not always easy up front but you understand you build trust you build respect with uh your not only with your peers internally because that's sometimes a tougher sale but it's also building with who do you want to build uh work with uh as a customer you got to build trust you got to become a trusted advisor so really understanding uh working with him has really uh provided a lot of value to me uh and then a couple uh that have worked with um over the time, some of my old bosses as well have really provided a lot of value, you know, uh, uh, on my end as well. Plus, I also come from the rugby. I'm a rugby player as well. So, you know, I've learned a lot from my coaches uh, uh, over time, over time as well. So speaking of rugby, have you heard about the Chiefs signing that rugby player? Yes. Yeah, I've seen him. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Lewis uh, Reese Zamet. Yep. He's How do you think that's going to be? He's a phenomenal player. So, I mean, is it, isn't that one of the reasons why Andy Reid's so good? I mean, how do you think that's going to translate rugby into football for him? I I look at it in in a, a several different ways. So his situational awareness on the field is going to be very, very high because rugby players have to play both forward offense and defense. And so, and his cardiovascular uh, level is going to be very, very high because he's got to play 80 minutes uh go all out so he'll run he could run a couple of uh of miles a game unlike at nfl you're not running that long so i yeah. think he has a lot of skills what he doesn't have is the depth of football players who you know been playing their whole lives so i think he's gonna the the skill and the the institutional knowledge i guess he doesn't have so it's, it's gonna be a wake-up call yeah uh, it's going to be a wake up call, but there's definitely a lot of rugby players. If you look around the world, uh, it's the Fijians, uh, you know, South Africans, they're, they're all around. They have phenomenal talent uh, that could be tapped into going both ways NFL to uh, to rugby and rugby to, to NF NFL. There's just a big learning curve. Yeah. 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 So let me ask you this in speaking of sports, Business is kind of like that. There's all these success stories that we we yes. root for people, we idolize them. What's your favorite business success story? Ooh, I'd say for a business success story, uh, I would say it was definitely in. I would say probably getting the uh, the pro rugby team that I worked with off the ground. Yeah. Uh, and in recent times, there's probably ones that happened years ago that's not coming up to my head uh, as of yet. But uh, I worked with a couple of uh, 
owners here in the uh, in the DC area that they had an opportunity to launch a professional uh, franchise, uh, rugby franchise. So think Major League Soccer uh, in the early '90s. You know, getting has to you have to get the uh, the foundation right first. But I had an opportunity to to work with the owners, help build the foundation, help build the structure from the marketing, uh, the business development, you know, the sponsorship, really be able to build that whole structure out with them to actually see it launched, getting it on TV, uh, getting fans into the stands, you know, really being able to see that grow from literally building it from a whiteboard idea. And it's like, hey, let's actually do that. Sometimes the structure is not there when businesses don't have the structure. You got to start somewhere. It's not always set for you. You got to start from nothing. And some companies start from nothing. So being able to do that and then actually seeing fans run into the stands, fans saying thank you. I mean, that hits, that hits, that hits in the feels, I guess. Like it feels really good. Yeah. So yeah. that's, that's probably one of the more recent ones. And uh, so, yeah, I, I definitely see that as definitely as a business success. So if you can meet anybody alive on the planet right now that you find fascinating, who would that be? Who would you love to meet and talk to? Uh, alive alive or, or dead? It could be both. It could be ghosts or alive. Okay. Ooh. Uh, I would say I, I would say if it was uh, alive, I definitely uh, would appreciate meeting like Mark Cuban. And if it was dead, I would probably have to go Nelson Mandela. Yeah. Yeah, so those would probably be the ones I think. Mark Cuban has a phenomenal business mind. I think he's very driven. Besides him being a rugby player, uh, I think how he uh, his approach. Uh, I'm definitely appreciative uh, how he and being a big sports fanatic, but I think he takes a great aspect to towards business. And then Nelson Mandela went the way he transitioned a whole country, and a, a, he did say, you know, sport does have the power to change to change the world. Uh, so I think he, he, he'd be a phenomenal one to, uh, to meet as well. So what's your drive every day? What gets you out of bed? What gets you to help your clients and to also grow as a human yourself? Yeah. So there's, uh, there's many things getting me out, uh, out of bed, at, uh, bed in the morning. Uh, one right now is I'm hosting a, a conference. I have a, a team working with me as well, but I'm hosting about a 400 person conference on Wednesday. So it's uh, all hands on deck. So that's the number one thing getting me out of bed at the moment but it's also a lot of clients i think have have great product and services and i know that working with them seeing their excitement and how they can grow if they if they grow and i know i can grow with them that that gives me that extra spark uh every single day uh as well and so that that really just uh, gets me moving and uh, a few of my clients have great products and seeing them connect with somebody new, you can see that extra, you know, their, their eyes get a little bit bigger that you can hear the excitement in the voice. And that makes me, that even makes me get a little bit more excited. It gets a little bit louder. So I think getting that extra pep in their step that, that gets me moving and how we could build depth in current accounts, find future accounts that they could, uh, we can move forward with becoming, and I, I say becoming a trusted advisor. I, 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 I think striving and structure is, is something we should all, all move forward with instead of just trying to sell a one-off and then go on to somebody else. Let's, let's build, build more depth uh, with everyone we work with. So you have to dispense good advice to clients. What's the best advice that you've ever gotten? It was a few years ago. Uh, and I, if I pick up my phone my, and uh, my boss goes, and he said, pick up your phone. He goes, who in your phone right now can you call either do a, uh, do work with right now or can call to help you find a partner to work with? Like, what does your current client looks look, look like? Or what is your current partners? What's your ecosystem look like? Who can you call for business business advice that's not internal to your company? I was like, good question. And I had to think about it. Yeah. He's like, call somebody, call him right now. And I had to think about it. He's like, like I, and, and it was, I would say with a solid punch to the, to the stomach. And he said, build your network, build your network and continue to build your network. It's like, it's not an internal. It's different than external. 
build your network, find reliable people that you can trust. You help them give, 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 and continue to give. All right. Because you want them to trust you. Cause you're eventually going to ask for something, but just continue to do that. And, and so I've made such a concentrated, I mean, I would, I was blown away. I give a lot of my friends the same advice now, but until he sat me down, he made me pull out my phone and be like, who on there can you actually call to actually work with or who might be able to connect with somebody? And I'll tell you what, it's, it, it was definitely, a, uh, I still think about it. I yeah. was like, all right. And I, and I continue to work on that every single day. Yeah. So let me ask you this as a sports fan, if you could get into a time machine and go back in time and see one sporting event, one moment with your own eyes, where are you going? I mean, uh, oh boy, trust me, I would love to see uh, Queen at Live Aid in 1984. Let's say, yeah. I think that would be awesome. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. I don't think it qualifies as a sporting event, but. Uh, uh, I mean, it could be a concert. That's a great answer. I mean, I think that that's stuff to top. I mean, yeah. what's, what's on your list? I would love to be in Shea Stadium on game six whenever that ball went underneath Billy Buckner's legs. I would love I'm to see I'm a Sox it. fan, so like, okay. okay. Okay, so yeah, that wouldn't. <laughs> but, you know, I didn't realize when I when I looked into the history of Billy Buckner, he played for the Royals. He really got around. I always feel bad for him. But my dad was uh, from Long Island, so I had this relationship with the Mets and just the way that place exploded, toilet paper flying, the whole thing. So, But I did I did root for the Red Sox in 04. I, was it 04? Yeah, when they finally got rid of the Hex. I was really into them getting that taken care of. So anyway. Yeah, it was uh, – I was in Boston after they beat the uh, beat the Yankees. And it was chaos. I mean, you saw people from generations earlier just crying in the street. Yeah. Uh, I was not in there after they won the World Series. Uh, I was uh, back at college, but it was, I heard it was, it was absolutely, it was phenomenal. Yeah. Uh, but if I had to go somewhere, uh, yeah, I, I'd probably, uh, from a sporting event, uh, I would probably have to uh, go back in the day. Um, it would probably have to be um i would have loved to see uh muhammad ali's uh, that uh that phantom knockout punch he had yeah yeah great answer i just listened to a biography on him and it was so good like there's so many things that i didn't realize you know real quick trivia Billy Buckner was not supposed to be in that game at that point. There was another guy that was in there because Billy Buckner historically had bad knees. And whenever it got really cold, he his mobility was compromised. And I can't remember who the guy was, but they only put him in because he was a veteran and they wanted him to feel the championship on the field. That's the weird thing about that. I didn't realize that until a few years ago. Yeah, there was some other dude that was supposed to be in there, but they put Billy Buckner in because he was a veteran and they wanted him to be there with the team when it happened. Because they no were just, kidding. yeah, they just were, they, they, they figured they were going to win that game. I mean, they were like an out away. So yeah, that's the weird wow. part of it. Yeah. yeah. Isn't it weird how life, the backstory that you get, it's just so wild, man. It is. That is, that is wild. That is, that is, that is pretty wild. Wow. I didn't, I did not, I didn't even know that about Yeah. But yeah, it's, it's totally weird. Yeah. So of all of these things that you've done and evolved into and accomplished in your life, what are you the proudest of? I mean, usually I'm, I'm the proudest of when I see, uh, you know, some of the people I work on my team, uh, they, you know, they go on and they do things very successful uh, on their own. Like I always want to be able to be, uh, be able to help people, you know, whether it's uh, individuals around me, it's like, hey, if I'm able to help you, I don't want to ever be the damper of of your success. If I can help you become better, I think I'd be always proud. If I can help you be successful, be successful, go somewhere else. I want to make sure I can I can help make that happen. Yeah. So that's something that I'm usually always proud of, and uh, I've I I think that's probably if I can help make someone get to that next step, you know. I can always find somebody else, but I, I want to make sure I can kind of be that catalyst 
if they did a great job, I will recommend them. Uh, I, I will be that advocate, but I think that's usually something I'm proud of. You know, I want to make sure people can not only make as much money uh, as they, they possibly can, but I want them to be able to strive. They have dreams. I want to be able to make sure they can, they can, uh, they can make it happen. So Whitney, at the end of the day, everyone has a perception of you, family, friends, clients, colleagues, that you run the show. What's your perception of you? Who do you think you are? Ooh, who, who am I? Uh, I, I think I, I, I think I'm a very driven individual uh, who's who uh, who wants to make the the best out of myself, both per personally and professionally, you know. And uh, I that's what I I look for uh, most. You know, I want to obviously make the make the world a better place, make my clients uh, do the best that they can do, and that's what I uh, and I'm very hungry when I do it. I'm I'm, I'm definitely out there to 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 win but i want to do it uh putting the right foot forward so that's that's what i mainly focus on but but uh it's i know it's not easy and uh i've i've, I've also been had great times i've been been i've had to build myself up multiple times so i've had some hard hard times so it's it hasn't always been easy but i've had to build myself back up for sure so if anyone wants to hire you reach out learn more about what you're doing anything about your world where can they go they can go to my website. It's uh, cribworks.co and they can go there. You can reach out to me. I post uh, daily on LinkedIn as well. So they can reach out and I'm happy to talk more, uh, more with them there. Man, I love your insights. I love your story. I got to tell you, man, I used to, in my 20s, one of my favorite people I used to run into at a party all the time was a rugby player and he was massive, but he had a heart like a teddy bear. He used to talk about all of his trips to Ireland and just, you know, playing and and how you better rest your body he opened my brain up to the whole idea of how rugby works as far as i'm concerned on this planet you guys take the cake when it comes to being real tough guys because that is hard like you said running offense defense being out there the amount you get hit the amount you have to heal before the next game it's it's mind-boggling i don't think people understand it because rugby is not as big as other sports but it is genuinely like that that's the top of the top oh i i appreciate that yeah i learned a lot you know, i played up and down the east coast i've taken teams overseas to paris to to Rome and we've got other locations and, and it's a, it's such a great international sport. It's a camaraderie off the field uh, as well, where you can, you can meet anybody and you can speak the same language. And I, I took uh, the team that I play for uh, a, a men's team here called the Washington Irish. We went outside of um, Rome to a place called L'Aquila and L'Aquila uh, had a, had a uh, earthquake, I don't know, probably 10, 15, about 15 years ago. Uh, and phenomenal rugby town. You're getting uh, a lot of uh, uh, guys from the hills of, uh, of Italy. And, but we could, we shared the same language of playing the sports. We drank, we sang, you know, we shared common values, but it was, it was a phenomenal, and we, we, we would share, you know, we'd give our jerseys off of our back. We'd share, we'd talk about family share pictures. It was a phenomenal bonding experience, but yeah. Uh, so that, I mean, you could, you could do that anywhere, but uh, trust me, we took some hard hits. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. Some of the things that we would do, you can do yeah. that anywhere in the world. Yeah. It's funny. I got to say one quick last thing. Sure. Live aid. So I got married in 2019 okay. and we picked July 13th and that's the day that that happened. So every time I think about the anniversary, July 13th was the day of live aid. So it's, Yes. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. So I was. Uh, it, it was great. I watched. Uh, I watched uh, the 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 Frank uh, the Queen movie. I can't remember the name of it. Yeah. Uh, uh, on uh, on a flight to England, and I was like, I was absolutely j just jamming out. Totally. The, oh yeah. Are you kidding? Going to England, watching that. Oh man. Watching it. I was rocking out, and I. Yeah. I looked behind me, and the guy, the, and the the guy behind me in the flight was like, "Yeah, yeah, <laughs> absolutely, man." Oh man, Whitney, thank you, sir. This has been great. I appreciate your time. Great to meet you, man. Yeah, very much. I appreciate your time. Anything, anything else? Feel free to reach out. Yes, sir. Have a great day, man.